welcome on this Christ the King Sunday. Um, I have a few announcements again. Um, cookie dough pickup will be after the service or meeting today. If you are not going to stay for the congregational meeting and you ordered cookie dough, um, we can grab, we'll have Christopher take care of grabbing your order um, after the service. And Lauren wanted me to be sure to thank everyone for supporting the, the Loser League. Um, we had four, made 46 dozen cookies um, for and, and $286, so thank you for that. Um, next Saturday will be the church decorating at um, on, uh, 9 a.m. next Saturday. So if you're able and willing, we would love to have your help. Like I said last time, we got done last year in just under an hour, but there were a lot of us working. So if the more that come, the faster we can get done. Um, next Sunday will be the last chance to order poinsettias for the Christmas service. So if you're interested in that, please make sure that Danielle gets your order form and money. Um, you can just put it in the church office um, to, to turn that in. Um, the usher position that's still listed in the announcements under the bulletin um, for covering December 12th and 26th has been taken care of. Thank you, Jim Swartz, for volunteering for that. Um, however, we do need to have a volunteer to pass out bulletins and communion cups on Sunday, December 26th. So if anyone is interested in doing that, just please let me or Danielle know. Um, we also wanted to make a huge thank you to all who provided um, for a more special Christmas for children in need. Um, for the Operation Christmas Child, we collected 52 shoe boxes um, for those kids. So thank you to everyone who participated in that. Um, there is another giving opportunity listed on the back page of the bulletin. Um, this is to provide gift bags for the residents of Jenna Cross on Wheeling Street. So if you're interested in that, please see the back of the bulletin for more information. And I think, oh wait, no, I have one more. It's on my phone, just one moment. Um, Bonnie McGeorge, who we have in our prayers often, has passed away. And her funeral service will be tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. if anyone um, would like to come for that. They'll be here at 11 a.m. tomorrow. And then other than just wishing you all <clears throat> lots of thanksgiving, let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
Okay. Good to see you again. Today, uh, as Adrian said, is Christ the King Sunday. This is the last Sunday of the church year. Uh, every year we kind of go through the whole story of, of our faith. And so next Sunday is going to be the first Sunday of Advent. So we start the story over again. And of course, as uh, she said, we want to wish you a very uh, blessed Thanksgiving and uh, uh, hope you have a super week. Uh, there's one other thing. She, she also mentioned Janet Cross. Of course, those are the folks that, that I work with. And uh, if you ever wonder what the Dickens I do over there, I, I am the Vice President for Mission Integration. And down on the bottom is the mission. Uh, and so my position has to do with make sure that the folks that work in our organization know that, that we are a ministry of the church and uh, that uh, we serve congregations and, and the people of God in caring for folks. So uh, uh, again, thanks for your partnership in that, and uh, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, let's begin our service with the call to worship, because the Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. We worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, Grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Have mercy on us, O God. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought. We have built walls instead of tables and have turned away the stranger. We have sought glory for ourselves and have treasured that which does not satisfy. Help us to love as you love, to welcome those you send, and to treasure mercy and justice. Turn us from our ways to your ways, and free us to serve those in need. Amen. God, who makes all things new, forgives your sin for Jesus' sake, and remembers them no more. Lift up your heads and your hearts. Yours is the kingdom of God. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always.
Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you anointed your beloved Son to be priest and sovereign forever. Grant that all the people of the earth, now divided by the power of sin, may be united by the glorious and gentle rule of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Daniel chapter 7, various verses. To the community for whom this passage was written, it seemed as though the oppression they were experiencing would never end. Daniel's message is, it shall end. The ancient one, who is judge, will call all nations to account and will give dominion to one like a human being, the Messiah. And now the reading. As I watched, thrones were set in place and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were open. As I watched in the night visions, I saw one like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the ancient one and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to you. Please read responsibly from Psalm 93. The Lord is king, robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. The Lord has made the world so sure that it cannot be moved. Ever since the world began, your realm has been established. You are a friend of the best. The waters have lifted up, O Lord. The waters have lifted up their voice. The waters have lifted up their pounding waves. Mightier than the sound of many waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea, mightier is the Lord of dwells in the high. Mightier than the sound of many waters, mightier is the Lord of dwells in the high. Your testimonies are very sure, and holiness befits your house, O Lord, forever and forevermore. Our second reading is from Revelation chapter 1, verses 4b to 8. The book of Revelation begins by celebrating the Almighty God, who spans all of time. Similarly, Jesus is celebrated as the firstborn from the dead, who rules over the world's rulers. He is the one whose return we eagerly await. And now for the reading. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was, and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of earth, to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, 
To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please prepare for the gospel. Stand as you're able. Hallelujah. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 18th chapter. In John's Gospel, here we uh, are given the story of Jesus before Pontius Pilate. And it really involves the comparison of two ways of exercising power, either through force or through love. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own? Or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your nation, your own nation, and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace and mercy and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. If you were to ask historians to list the greatest leaders that the world has ever known, chances are pretty good that you find that most of the lists contain the name Caesar Augustus. It was Caesar Augustus who fixed the limits of the Roman Empire. During his reign, the peace of Rome, which lasted 200 years, over 200 years in fact, was begun, was initiated. It was Caesar Augustus who ordered the building of all those roads linking the great Roman Empire and allowing rapid access to other kingdoms. It was also the road that enabled Apostle Paul and other evangelists to travel all over the world, the then known world at least. It was Augustus who gave Rome its constitution who created the office of emperor and invested that office with unlimited power, even though he himself never used the title emperor. The age of Augustus was a bright spot in literature and in the arts. It was the era that gave the world Virgil and Homer and so many of the great historians. Augustus was truly a great ruler. So isn't it ironic that now 
now over 2,000 years after the reign of Augustus Caesar. He is mainly remembered because every year at Christmas time, we read these timeless words. In those days, the decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And of course, of those to be taxed, were Mary and Joseph of Nazareth. You know, I think Caesar Augustus would be shocked to realize that during his reign, someone who was born who was greater than he was. John, in the book of Revelation, and we heard part of that, called him the one who was born, Jesus Christ, the faithful witness the firstborn of the dead, the ruler of the kings on earth. In short, this was the one who had been anointed king of kings and lord of lords. And so we hear Pontius Pilate in our, our gospel lesson today asking our Lord, are you the king of the Jews? We know the answer that Pilate himself gave because it was put on a placard written at the top of Jesus' cross. Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Indeed, he is the King of all people. And on this festival today, that's what we celebrate. Christ the King. We celebrate his lordship over all. But what does that mean? What is that about? What does it mean to say that Christ is king, that, that he's king of this world? I suspect that there are a lot of things, but there are three of them that I'd like to share with you this morning. First of all, he is king of a world unfinished. A world unfinished. And second, he is king of a world visited. And then finally, he is the king of a world challenged. Unfinished, visited, and challenged. First of all, Christ is king of a world unfinished. What that says to us is that this world of ours certainly is not the kind of world that our Lord desires. Indeed, he is king, but there's, there's a whole lot of unfinished business. There's a lot that remains to be done to repair this place of ours, this world. The unfinishedness of our world has been described by a lot of people in a lot of different ways. The cynic George Bernard Shaw once wrote, if the other planets were inhabited, they must be using the Earth as an insane asylum. Or there's the bumper sticker that reads like this, the rat race is over, the rats won. And then there's Ogden Nash who put it this way. Progress may have been all right, but it went on too long. Or how about the analysis of Gil Stern in the Wall Street Journal? It's finally happening. The new color TV set have sharp pictures. Now the real world is getting blurred. So the world is unfinished. If Christ is king, as he indeed is, there's still some unfinished business because the world is made up of people and not one of us is whole. 
Not one of us is complete. Not one of us is finished yet. Dr. Robert Miller takes, talks about his five-year-old son. His son's name is Al, and Al's parents were worried because they needed to visit their friends at a funeral home to offer support for them at the time of their bereavement. But they were unable to find a babysitter for five-year-old Al and his, his sister, so they decided they had to take the kids with them. And before they left, Al's dad bent down close to him to explain what the expected behavior was to be for this very solemn occasion. Al, he said, you're going to have to be as good as you can be this evening. And then the four of them went to the funeral home. When they first arrived, Al mimicked the behavior of sad adults, but not for long. When Al's father looked around at one point, he observed his son standing in the middle of the room, twirling his jacket over his head as if he were about to lasso somebody with it. He grabbed his son by the arm and, and pulled him out aside and whispered fiercely, Son, I thought I told you to be as good as you can be tonight. And Al cheerfully replied, But Daddy, I am. And he was right. He was being as good as he could be. This is an unfinished incomplete world and we are unfinished sinful people people whose lives are marred by unhappiness and frustration fear and failure much of it caused by our own inability to be what we know our creator wants us to be we need help and we need lots of it, because even at our best, we fall short. Even at our best, we are inadequate. And what matters worse is that we know it. But hold on. There's more. Not only is Christ the king of a world unfinished, but there's good news because Christ is king of a world visited. E. Stanley Jones once told the story of the custom of the people on the island of Formosa hundreds of years ago. Formosa, hundred years ago, they offered human sacrifices. They had a kindly emperor, though, by the name of Goho, who changed all that. According to his law, only animals, not humans, were to be sacrificed. But there was a terrible drought one year, and the crops failed altogether. And once again, the people clamored for human sacrifice. Very well, said Emperor Goho. Tomorrow morning at dawn, go to the forest, and you will find your victim for sacrifice. He will be tied to a tree and wearing a red robe. Strike him, for he is your sacrifice. So early in the morning, the men rose with their clubs and they found things just exactly as Emperor Goho had said. There was the sacrifice tied to a tree, wearing a red robe. And they rushed forward and they killed him. They slew him. And when they pulled the robe and uncovered his face, They were horrified to see that it was Emperor Goho. They really 
beloved emperor, by his death, Boho was able to do what his law would never do. It changed the hearts and minds of his people forever. Never again were there human sacrifices offered on Formosa. And the red robe became the symbol of a changed life. Men discarded their dingy robes and put on red ones as if to say, I am Goho's person. They became known as persons of the robe. That's really who we are as well, persons of the robe. Because the writer of Hebrews called us kings and priests called us a royal priesthood. This is an unfinished world. But into this unfinished world came the king. And he made the ultimate sacrifice on our behalf. And now he has commissioned us, you and me, to be soldiers in his army priests in his ministry. He came to see that this unfinished world becomes the kingdom over which he can reign forever. There's a newspaper story sometime back recorded of a grim incident of a police officer who was, who was shot and killed one day in, in the line of duty his great desire before he was killed was to see his, his family's backyard completely landscaped. A, a desire that was never fulfilled because a bullet had ended, ended his life. But some of his fellow officers who had grown to love their fallen comrade donated their time and their money to complete the work. Because it was this policeman's desire to finish the project, it became his friend's desire as well. And the application of that to those who love Jesus Christ is clear. What he loved and what he desired, we should love and we should desire to complete. His work is to see lost women and men saved and built up. His work is to see our unfinished world redeemed and given purpose and given direction. His work is to see this unfinished world of ours brought to completion. We who love him are called to complete the task. Helen Keller once said, the world is moved along not only by the mighty shove of its heroes, also by the aggregate of the tiny pushes of each honest worker. And that's who we are, friends. And that's what we are called to do. Once there was a farmer who had two mules. One was named Willing, and the other one was named Abel. However, willing was willing, but not able. And Abel was able, but not willing. The farmer didn't get much done. Christ needs people who are willing and able. And the ironic thing is that when we subordinate our desires 
his desires. When we enlist as private in his army, when we serve as priests in his temple, which is the world, when we give ourselves in his service, it is then that we are lifted up. In losing ourselves, we find ourselves. That's the nature of God's kingdom. And this leads us to part three of our meditation here on Christ the King. Christ the King is king of a world challenged. There was a noted novelist who was talking with a friend about uh, two of their greatest countrymen. And of one they said, well, he makes everyone around him seem smaller. That's his greatness. But then they decided that the other one was even greater because he made everyone around him feel great. It's subordinating our desires to the desires of Christ we, and becoming less than, than we might desire to be. The ironic thing is that God then lifts us up and makes us greater. It's really kind of what St. Francis is saying. Is, uh, that it, it's getting ourselves out of the way that God enables us to be what he calls us to be. As John says in the book of Revelation, he who is ruler of kings on earth loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom priest to his God and Father. It's an unfinished world. And as we who have been called to bring it to completion. This is not to say that, that the kingdom of God is going to be brought about by our efforts. It is Christ who builds the kingdom. But he builds it through those who are receptive to his, his word. It's you and me. I think you have out on the sign in the front, God's work our hand. We become God's instruments, the muscle and blood and skin and bones that, that God calls together in Jesus to accomplish his will. Bailey Smith tells about seeing on a national survey a story that, that some of you may remember. It's been a while. It was just after the bombing of the American embassy in Beirut. 250 Americans were killed in that bombing, and many were wounded. On national television, there was a picture of, of General Paul Kelly, he's deceased now, but a picture of him leaning over a young Marine. This young Marine had been blinded by the explosion. He had a tracheotomy in his throat, so he couldn't see, nor could he speak. But as General Kelly bent over him, he reached up again and touched the four stars on the general's shoulder. Two days later, the Marine had a birthday. And General Paul Kelly brought those four stars as a present to this young soldier. The general said, son, we are so proud of you for what you have, for what you have given for your nation. The young man couldn't speak, but he motioned for a pencil and a piece of paper. And on the paper, he wrote two words. Two words that appear on the insignia 
of the Marines, Senator Gonzalez, always faithful. I guess the question is, will you and I be able to wear that insignia on our uniform when we stand before the throne of Christ? Christ is king. Of course, we live in an unfinished world. He's come into this unfinished world and provided a way, provided a way through which it might be redeemed. And we are called to be his priests. We are to be called his princes, his ambassadors, his ministers. Paul writes, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself and giving unto us a ministry of reconciliation. There is so much to do, so, so much to do. Can he count on us? Do we have written on our hearts some fair spidelis? Are we people of the robe? Are we completing our friend's work? Christ the King, yes, he is. And that truth elevates our lives and our work as well as we seek to serve him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Holy God, God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts, that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let's continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Eternal God, you hold firm among the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. <clears throat> God, you sent your son Jesus to testify to the truth. We pray for preachers, missionaries, evangelists, and teachers who carry your forgiveness and love to the world. Fill their words and actions with compassion and kindness, so that your truth will shine. God, in your mercy. God, you sent your Son, Jesus, to liberate all of creation. We pray for all living things longing for the freedom to flourish, from ancient trees and wild grasses to endangered animals and rare insects. Give human beings compassionate hearts to care for them. God, in your mercy. God, you sent your son Jesus to lead us into the way of peace. Direct the members of international alliances in choosing a nonviolent path toward the future. Give them the humility and wisdom to make just decisions to benefit all. God, in your mercy. God, you sent your son Jesus to make us into your own people, set free to serve you. We pray for people who serve the well-being of others, especially ministries in our community. Renew them in their work. God, in your mercy. God, you sent your son Jesus to rule in all times and places. We pray for the friends of our congregation who are unable to join our worship in person and for all who are sick and suffering. Join their prayers with ours and unite them with us in the body of Christ. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. God, you sent your son Jesus to be our beginning and our ending. We give thanks for those whose lives have given us a glimpse of Jesus' reign of justice and peace. Empower us to join their witness. God, in your mercy. God, our hope and strength, we entrust to you all for whom we pray, especially the families of Bonnie McGeorge, Robert Durker, Calvin Hoffer, Claire Smithers, and the Reverend William and Judith Paul. Remain with us always through Jesus Christ our Savior.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. Through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
saints before us. Go in peace and serve the Lord.